let me introduce myself. My name is Ruba. I'm half Syrian, half Lebanese, living somewhere on a plane between Beirut and London, where um, I work with Syrian refugees since 2011. Now, I've been told I'm here to shock you, to bring you to tears, to tell you stories about Syrian refugees, but I'm not going to do that for many reasons. First of all, because in this room are many people who know a lot about Syria. We've heard in all of the speeches how many of you have already visited camps and who already know about the situation. The second reason is because I'm Syrian, but I'm also a professional. I'm not a storyteller. I'm here to give you consultation and to report on the 80-plus Syrian civil society organizations who have met and have been backed by international organizations yesterday at the civil society uh, conference. Because I keep hear hearing in every report the future of Syria belongs to Syrians. So it's funny to ju juxtapose that with telling stories. Thank you for inviting us. The invitation of Syrian has been last minute. A lot couldn't make it because of Fortress Europe and the visa issues. Our presence here has been a token presence at an ad hoc event of which the priorities have already been predetermined without our involvement. Hence why we see food and health as not one of the key priorities as if they have been already fulfilled, which is not true. It's a very, very complex war, yes, but the solutions are very simple. I'm saying simple. I'm going to say things that you might think are very uh, you know, intuitive, but actually this is the truth. Refugees, we keep, keep listening about refugees, refugees decentralized category as if refugees are not humans. But if we go back to it, refugees are humans. And what do humans need first? Protection. End the violence now. Uphold international humanitarian law and ensure accountability for those who breach it. End all the sieges and ensure access to humanitarian aid. If international organizations need permission to do that, then the system has failed. If all the billions that we will raise today will not reach to besieged areas, then the system has failed. We have seen the U.S. very close to do airdrops of aid. Please follow this lead to provide temporary relief. Please use the airspace to shower people with food, not bombs. Now that the human is alive, the human needs to be safe. Protection inside Syria, especially on health and educational facilities. No more detentions. Release all detainees. Resolve the residency and regularize the stay of refugees in neighboring countries. We need safe and legal routes to Europe. We thank the generosity of the European government in raising money. However, this is not enough. If a colleague of mine said, if people have to risk their lives to arrive to Europe, how do you expect them to integrate? Integration and the fight to and, and, and the fight to integration starts way before that. Now that the people are safe, Syrian families in camps ask mainly for schooling for the children, even before that they ask for food. Involving technology in that is very important. However, please do not sideline the teachers. Continue involving the teachers, especially Syrian teachers. Ensure the sustainability and the quality of informal education. How to make it recognized. Practically, which country will lead on that and will there be a platform for that? All of us know here that we take the value of our lives from work and from what we have to offer and give. Access to decent work. Please do not confine Syrians to construction workers, community jobs, because I've seen that kind of language and it's not really pleasant. How to ensure the accountability of the plans. How much of these funds will actually be concessional on the governments who are already in debt. We need a martial size plan for the development of the whole of the Middle East to sustain the job, but also to provide legalization for these jobs. Women need to be leading on all of that process, and we thank the Norwegians for, for taking lead in that and inviting the Syrian women to breakfast and taking lead on, on this initiative. Now, who are your partners? Who are your friends? Civil society organizations are great. Civil, Syrian civil society organizations are the most important. They work closely with international communities. They are your watchdogs to ensure that the pledges are met, to ensure the implementation and ensure the accountability. They are also great because they are doing the bulk of the, of, of the work where the UN has failed. The Syrian civil society organizations are doing this work, and I can say at least in Lebanon, but also in other countries. Also because Syrians are not our beneficiaries. They are our families. They are our friends. They are our colleagues. In order to support civil society organizations, we need you to resolve banking issues 
that result from anti-terror legislations. Don't fight the wrong people, guys. Don't fight us with this legislation. In each of our organizations, we spend so much time on banking compliance, which really obstructs our jobs. In Lebanon, there is only one bank who accepts to deal with organizations. I got maybe a promise from uh, Prime Minister Cameron yesterday on also having a bit uh, better legislation here in the UK, and I hope this gets in other countries. Long-term funding directly to civil society organizations going up to 2020 and more. Flexible funding. And also, please take a leap of faith in trusting our strategies and our programs instead of repeating programs that were you know, designed for other regions. Beyond the fourth, today is a statement of intent Today is very important, and we thank everybody for their generosity. But what ma matters more is the modality of the implementations. I invite and I urge all of you to have us Syrians at the forefront of the strategies. Speak to us, please. Don't speak only about us. Don't speak only in our names. How many people in this room today are Syrian? Can I see a show of hands, please? One other person. Two other people. That's great. Please, I want to see us leading this process and not only invited ad hoc visits at the last minute. Finally, I want to say thank you to everybody. The UK has been the first among the three donor conferences to actually invite Syrians to the conference. Uh, we hope this culminates more at the World Humanitarian Summit at the UN, but also in the whole of the process. In this room, I see leaders. I see good leaders, but I hope to see great and inspiring leaders, those who make history, those who will be remembered, those who everybody wants to claim to have voted for them, those who everybody wants to claim to be their own, people who will be the next Martin Luther King, the next Benazir Bhutto, the next Churchill, the next uh, Madeleine Albright, the next Mandela of our times, people who will make history in that sense. And each one of you can be that person. Remember that. And I promise you from here, I will be returning the hospitality of all of you for hosting us today, hopefully in the next donor conference, which will be held in Syria. Thank you very much.